Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, let's talk about Lightroom's Content Aware Remove Tool. This was added to Lightroom in October-ish of 2022. It's a welcome addition for doing retouching. It really brings some of the power of the you know, object aware, content aware type things we've seen in Photoshop and on one and other tools into Lightroom. You know, things that we, we couldn't necessarily retouch away easily in Lightroom just got a whole lot easier. I've been working with the the, the feature and the new tools you know, for, for the last month or so. And I've got a few you know tips and guidance for you know things to uh, to get your best results out of using uh, content aware remove. So uh, let's have a look at the tool. Let's dive into it here. Content aware remove lives in the retouching area. We've got a new tool here, right? We've got content aware remove in addition to the heel and the clone brush. And you know, looking at this photo here, I've, I've done just the, the basic processing on it and enough to know, yeah, I want to continue with this photo. There's a few distracting elements in it, right? We've got the people and the bird up on the rock on the left-hand side. In the lower right, there's a string of unattractive seaweed, a little clump at the very far corner. And even in the whitewash, there's a couple of spots where that could benefit from doing some type of retouching. Now, these are all things that theoretically were possible to remove in Lightroom with just heal and clone, it would just require more work. And now with content aware remove, the, the work is is easier. Uh, but let's let's start with um, with some of the things that work very, very well with content aware remove. And then I'll show you some of the things that well, sometimes you have to coax things a little bit or uh, there might be a, a brush stroke guidance for things. So uh, so let's start with um, let's start with the bird. All right, let's zoom in on our area to work on. Let's get it nice and close to our panel here. So we have everything in one place. Now the bird is gonna be very easy. And this is the, these are the types of things where Content Aware Remove excels at. You get the brush to be big enough that it's surrounding your subject or the, the thing you want to remove. Give it a little breathing room. And that's a single click operation and that's Great. I mean, it's it's done. It, there's really nothing else to do there. If I didn't show you there was a bird there to begin with, you wouldn't know that now, right? So that that's that's where it is. this tool shines. Now let me undo that. If I were to try the same thing with say this larger object, now the challenge becomes first I have to make this brush a lot bigger if I want to do a single click. This is content aware remove. So I'm going to click once. And Lightroom's going to look around the thing I'm trying to remove and notice the bird got replicated. It's like, okay, so you can't necessarily do single click things when you have a larger subject and there are smaller things that are nearby. You might be able to do this if it were like a, a, a single thing that needed to be removed. I don't know, like a telephone pole on a horizon where there was nothing else except that telephone pole. Maybe this would be a one click. But when you've got things that are closer by, that becomes a problem. So instead, you've got to do a little more targeted painting. So I'll make that brush smaller and then start to outline folks. And I like to give a little breathing room, right? Get the, like her, uh, you know, the end of her toe, get that out of there. Underneath the blanket, there's some breathing room. And then you can see how the shape starts to take place, right? You get this, this kind of, you know, everything that's inside the white line. And as you, as you go over a line, you kind of fill it in. So it's, it's kind of, um, kind of funky working with it this way actually, but it does let you fill things in and you can do things like donut shapes or stuff like that. If you had an interesting object you needed to, uh, to remove. So something like that, a little bit of breathing room, I'll let go. It'll work. And that's pretty close. It left this bit of rock here. So maybe I can do a second sweep for the rock getting better. Here is where you kind of start to reach the no, not necessarily the limits of content aware remove. You might have to do two or three on these, but at this point, I might reach for traditional clone stamp to to fill that in because that's a that's a relatively clean edge. And uh, I'll, I guess I'll go ahead and get rid of the uh, this other bird here while I'm at it. Take care of that. But here, you know, I, I'd turn to say another tool, like for example, you know, option. I'll choose here, and then you know maybe try to paint there. 
to fill things in. That was a very poor choice on my part, but you get the idea. I don't want to go down the road of combining all the tools here because we do have them. You can do it, but with content aware remove, the, the, the takeaway right now for this part of the video is when you have a larger object, be aware of what's surrounding the size of your brush because those tend to come into your retouching area. So instead, do some targeted painting. All right, uh, next thing I want to show you is when you are doing painting of something that you, you do need to give breathing room or you'll get some, some odd looking artifacts. Uh, so let's turn our attention to that string of seaweed for this example. So here I've got this long string, this you know, piece of you know, kelp or whatever it is draped over the rock here. It's just unattractive. You know, the parts that are down in beneath you know, here, they don't bother me as much, but this piece that's kind of cutting across the rock, I don't like that. And so a temptation may be to be, all right, let me get as precise as I can with this brush. This is a thin thing. And so let me get my, my click there and I'll start, you know, very carefully drawing my retouch stroke over this kelp. Really being careful. This I want. I don't want to remove anything else except what's here, because uh, this is the thing that's distracting. And okay, I finish that. I let go, and it's good. But notice there is some artifacting, right? You do get some some artifacts there, but it is a good replacement. Undo that. Give yourself the breathing room, and you'll get a good result. And it honestly makes it easier to brush too, but that extra breathing room. So I'll go through here. You can notice I'm able to, to move a little faster with the brush now too. We'll go ahead and finish that. And I get a smoother result. There's just no artifacting there. So giving yourself that breathing room with your brush, the object you want to remove, give it that extra space, uh, and content aware remove just figures that stuff out. While we're down here, uh, let's go ahead and take care of, uh, take care of this seaweed down in the corner too. So, you know, I'll go through here, just kind of fill in the space so I've got everything. Not bad, left a little bit, maybe squiggle around on there. Still struggling a little bit, maybe give it a little more context. All right, better. Now it doesn't look like seaweed, it just looks like more rock. And you can see I'm doing a few extra strokes here. But, you know, that was five to seven seconds worth of work where with heal or with clone, that would have been a lot more work. One more thing I want to show you with content to where we move, and that's uh, guiding the sample point. Let's use this bit of seaweed here as the example for this. If I just do my uh, little brush stroke over there, content to where we move, it uh, does a pretty darn good job taking that away. Notice there is this message, command drag on the photo to select a custom source, or in Windows it'd be control drag. This is where you have the opportunity to influence where content to where remove is choosing to uh, sample from to do this removal, right? If I press the H key, I just have this, you know, this one little point here and it doesn't like reference anything else. Command drag, if I hold the command key down, I get a little crosshair cursor. I can drag a sample area, like say here, to influence where that sample is taken from. And you can see each time I do a different selection, I'm getting a different result in what I retouched away. Now I can choose something poor, like if I choose the rock here, I'll get some very bizarre looking thing. But if you get something that doesn't look quite right, you can use command or control drag to influence that final look. And I think, you know, what I, what I saw in this area here, that looked nice, that looked good. So uh, that is how you can, you know, it's influence the, uh, the sample point. If you do that initial retouch and it doesn't look quite right, or you wanted it to be from another uh, tonal area, you've got that option. Last thing I'll show you about Content Aware Remove is it's not always the right tool for the job. Let's have a look. As I was working on the whitewash, I noticed this other bit here on this rock. Let's move this closer to our control area so we can see everything in one spot. There's this little you know, twig or whatever it is on here, probably more seaweed. If I try to do a content aware remove, it's gone. It's pretty good, 
but you know I'm, I'm a stickler and uh, I noticed that there's a little bit of a loss of detail here right this striations on this rock I'm, I'm, I'm losing that you know would I would I worry about it too much for this photo you know undo probably not I mean there's this there's this ridge of rock here that you know if I brush that away that's disappearing I wouldn't notice, but if this is one of these, and I guess this is like a, you know, either a very important photo, it's your five star photo, or there are details that need to be maintained, well, content aware remove may not be the best choice. It may be better to use the clone stamp tool, which is really pixel copying, right? You can maintain detail, you know, being able to use like, you know, a uh, clone stamp and selecting from here and moving there. Actually, I, I chose clone stamp and you notice things things shifted there. I think I actually shifted the, the mode of that particular replacement. But my point being using clone to sample something from like say, you know, here and then you know trying to paint it down somewhere else, that would maintain your detail more accurately. So content aware remove, as powerful as it is, it may not be the right tool for the job. When you have detail that needs to be maintained behind the thing that you are removing, uh, you might remove it first with content aware and then come back in with clone stamp to, to, to bring in those details again from somewhere else in the photo. Might need a little bit more work. Uh, so just don't always rely on content aware remove. It's not the only tool in your toolbox. Hope you found the video useful. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.